Welcome back. In our last video we went ahead and finished up our design and created a couple different templates from that design. We then went ahead and created all the individual pages that were going to be included in our site from those templates. What we want to start doing in this video is start focusing on the content area and some of the interactive or animated features that are going to be in our website. Let's go ahead and take a look really quickly at the finished site. And you can see the very first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is this rotating banner. And you can see the image fades in and out. And there's also a semi-transparent box to the right that drops down that has some text in it for the images. This tool is actually called a slider or a content slider. Now, there are lots of these content sliders that you can get and use. Um, there's one included in my framework, and that's the one we're going to use in this video. But you can very easily go to Google and um, Google uh, banner slider or content slider, and you can come up with several dozen of these slider type tools. So let's go ahead and begin. Now. I'm going to go ahead and come over here to Files. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and close this page off first. And I'm going to come over here to Files, and I'm going to go into my framework. And inside of the framework folder, you're going to see there's a JavaScript or a JS folder here. Whenever you see a folder named JS, that means that it contains JavaScript files. I'm going to go ahead and click that drop or that plus sign there, and I'm going to go into the Plugins folder. And the code that we're going to be using is in this folder here for banner slider. And if I click that plus sign there, you're going to see there's a couple folders for CSS and JavaScript, as well as a text document with instructions. I'm going to go ahead and open those instructions up because we're going to need them. And then I'm going to go ahead and expand both the JavaScript and the CSS folder. Now, if you've already, if you're using the framework um, for these exercises, you're already going to have the jQuery um, JavaScript file in your site. If you're not using the exercise files, you can go ahead and go to jQuery.com and download the latest version of jQuery and save it in your JavaScript file. So the two files that we're actually going to need are the CSS file for the slider and the actual JavaScript for the slider. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the first one here. And then I'm going to go, hold, go ahead and hold down the control key on the keyboard and click the second one. And if you're on a Macintosh, hold down the command key to select both of those files. You can then go ahead and right click on them go to edit and copy. We need to copy these two files in our framework and then we're going to go ahead and go into our project folder. And I want to paste those into the JavaScript folder here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click right here, edit, paste. And you'll see those have been pasted in there. Now obviously the CSS file doesn't go in this folder. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag that up there into my CSS folder. So you should now have slider.css in your CSS folder and you should have slider.js in your JavaScript file. And you can also see here's the jQuery file and again if you're not using the framework go to jQuery.com, download this library and include it in your JavaScript folder. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is you can see my instructions here I'm going to go ahead and open up a template that we created earlier. And there's the main template for this site. Now, I want the option of being able to apply this template to pages that need this slider or that I want the slider to appear on. But I also want to be able to use this template without the slider. That way if I'm doing something else like a light box or a modal pop-up or something like that, I'm not stuck with um, having to modify this template again. So I'm going to go ahead and again, we have this template open. I'm going to go to the File menu and say Save as Template. 
and I'm going to call this one shears dash slider. So the only difference between shears main and shears slider is going to be the main one is not going to have this slider tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and come into code view and I'm going to scroll up to the top here. Now I opened up my slider instructions earlier and if you don't have those open go into the framework and you want to open up slider instructions right there and I'll go back into my project folder always go back into your project folder there so you can see there are real simple steps to follow to set up this slider the first thing you need to do is you need to add both a jQuery script and the slider script to your page now we already have in our framework a link to the jQuery script right here but if you don't have uh, or if you're not using the framework and don't have this you're going to want to enter this top line right here into your page so what we need to do now is we need to copy this second line here and I'm going to go ahead and copy that again we already have jQuery set up and then I'm going to go ahead and highlight this blank line right here and paste that in there and hit enter. We'll save that. And then I need to put the path into the slider. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything right here. You'll see it says insert path to jQuery slider. I'm going to highlight that whole line including the quotation marks. I'm then going to type a quotation mark that brings up the browse option I'll press enter and that's going to go ahead and bring me into my main folder for shears design if you're not here if you're still in the framework or in another folder you can click this drop down and go to your main folder now again we place that slider plugin in our JavaScript folder so I'm going to double click on that select the slider.js and click OK and we're going to go ahead and save that. So I've added jQuery and I've also added slider.js. The only thing you need to worry about here is you need to make sure that jQuery is before, this jQuery script is before this slider.js script. Now come back in here to my instructions and you can see step two is pasting in a link to the CSS file. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that line and copy it and then I'm going to come back into my document. I'm going to highlight the blank line underneath the print style sheet and I'm going to go ahead and edit paste that in there. And I'll hit enter once just to sort of give myself a break there so I can see where one stops and the other starts now again you're going to highlight this area here that says insert the slider CSS file make sure you get your quotation marks highlighted and then type a quotation mark which brings up the browse option hit enter and that's going to bring you into your select file now we're still in the JavaScript folder the JS folder which is where we went and got the JavaScript slider plugin this time we're getting the CSS so I need to go up one level to go back into my main folder and then go ahead and go into my CSS file. There's the slider.css so I'll go ahead and click on that and click OK and it will put the path to your slider.css in that line. So that's step two. So so far we've just been copying and pasting and that's basically all we're going to go ahead and do for um, this project or this part of the project. Now I'm going to come back into my instructions and here's step three and it says to take this code and put it you're going to put this in the header section as well. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and then I'm going to right click on copy or you could have gone to edit and copy and then I'm going to go into my plugin and I'm going to paste this I'm sorry I'm going to go into my template I said plug in there and I'm going to go ahead and paste that in right here 
directly underneath the slider.js plugin line. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that line and paste that in there. And I again like putting these extra lines in just so that everything um, appears nice and neat and I can tell what's what. Now, the only thing that you're going to need to change in this script is the value 3000 here. This is going to be the amount of time that each one of the slides is displayed. 3000 is the equivalent of 3 seconds. It's actually 3000 milliseconds here. And that's pretty quick, so I'm going to go ahead and actually change that to 6000. That way the animation doesn't go quite as fast. You can make that any value you want at all. And just remember, 6,000 is 6 seconds, 3,000 is 3 seconds, so on and so forth. And let's go ahead and save that. So now we have all the scripts and the CSS added to our page. Now let's go back to our instructions, and you can see here is step 4. And in step four, you're going to go ahead and highlight this chunk of text right here. You can see the div that we're copying is called the slider div. So you're going to copy all this text. And again, I right clicked on it and copied, but you could go to edit and copy. And then I'm going to go back into my template. Now, right now, my template has a div here called banner. And that's where that single banner image is appearing. And I want to replace the static banner that we have right now with this slider. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this whole div, everything in between the opening and the closing line there. And I'm going to paste this over it. And now I have a div for slider. And I'm going to again save that. Now. This is fairly easy to set up. Right here, the very first item, you're going to have an image. This is the actual image that you want to appear in the, ba the rotating banner. So if you to choose your own image, you're going to go ahead and highlight this, type a quotation mark, press enter for browse, and come back into our select file dialog box. And again, I'm still in the CSS folder. That's the last place I was. So I'm going to click the up one level button right here. And I'm going to go into my images folder. And I'm going to go into my banner folder. And again, if you're using the framework, you or you have these sample images available to you. If not, you just need to go into any image editing program like Fireworks and create four images that are each 900 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall. And there's the first image that I want to appear. So I'm going to select that and click OK. So that will be the first image that appears. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got so far. Now, normally what I would do is I would go into Design View and hit Live View to see this animation effect. And you can definitely do that. But because I'm recording this, the recorder sometimes crashes when I do that with a plugin. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do Preview Chrome. But again, either way will work for you. And you can see here's my design and here is my slider area. And there's that drop down. And because I'm not working off of a server, I'm working off my local computer, it's a little bit slow coming up, but yours should be much quicker. Now, I want you to notice right now the same image is just appearing over and over and over again. And that's because we just have one image in the um, code. I'm going to minimize that. Everything in between here, this opening list item, and here, this closing li tag, is the content for each individual slide in your slider. So if you want there to be two slides, 
what you would do is you would highlight this block of text, copy it, and then paste it in again. And you, the very last thing in this div, or after your last list item, should be this line here that says div class clear. So that's going to be the very last thing before you're closing UL. So now I have a second image in my rotating uh, banner. And again, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this content here, including the quotation marks. I'm going to type another quotation mark, which brings up the Browse option, and I'm going to press Enter. And because the last folder that I'm in was the banner image folder, I can just click on number two. And again, these images, you can make them out of whatever you want, but you need to resize them so that they're 900 pixels by 300 pixels. In a moment, you're going to see in the CSS where you can change that value. So if the images you want to use, let's say, are smaller, let's say 800 by 250, it is possible to change that. But for right now, we're using a 900 by 300 image. So I selected that second image and clicked OK. And I'm going to save this. And I'm again going to preview it in Chrome. And let's see the way this is going to work this time. And my computer is just really slow right now. But you can see the first image there, along with a semi-transparent box to the right. And here's the second image. And again, if you had four images in your rotation, you would just copy that list item four different times. And you can see I'm just rotating through two right now. But let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and copy this again. And I'm going to paste it in one more time. And again, I'm just adding those line breaks there. And then I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. And browse for my third image. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time. I'm going to paste that in and then browse for my second, my fourth image. So I'll select that fourth image there. And I always number my images whenever they're going to be part of a gallery or a slideshow or anything at all. And you can see I've named them B1, B2, B3, B4. And um, that way I can tell the order that I want them um, to be in. I'm going to save that and let's preview it and let's see it go through those four images. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and close some of these and just refresh. There we go. And I need to restart my computer. There we go. You can see the first image there. And again, I'm leaving six seconds in between my slides. There's the second image. And here's the third image. So you're just rotating through these images. Now, this slider also has a feature inside of it that if you mouse over the image it's going to actually halt the animation so the user will have time to read the text that's over here in this semi-transparent box to the right. Now I want you to notice that there's a couple of pieces of text here. There's the headline, this is an image title, and then there's some text down below it. Let's go ahead and look at our source code here. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up to the first image. And again, that's banner one. The very first line after your image that says span class top, that's going to be, this content here is going to be the headline for that image. So I can go ahead and type first slide heading here, or whatever I want to come in there. You then have a series of lines here that begin with line breaks to allow you to have the code that's below it. And the reason why you want to put these breaks in is so that the text does not run off 
of the transparent box. So this BR, all that means is a line break. But you can very simply go in here and highlight this text and I can type this is some new text in the box. And you could go ahead and replace each one of these lines. If you want more lines, just simply copy a line and paste it in. If you want to take some lines out, just simply highlight them and delete them. We're going to go ahead and save this. And let's go back into our slider here and refresh the page. And when the first slide appears, you're going to see it now says this is an image title. Actually, I didn't put that on the first one, did I? It's coming up. Uh, did I save that? One more slide. Let's see if it comes up. There we go. First slide headline. And this is some text in the box. Just had to come around to the very first slide again. So that's how you set up this image slider. Now, one thing that you're going to notice right now is that my content area is again pushed right up against that image. And that's because we applied some CSS positioning to push the bottom margin of this image div down to push our content down. But that CSS was attached to the old div, the banner div that just had that static image inside of it. So let's go ahead and correct that. I'm going to come back in here to Dreamweaver and I'm going to come into my styles.css and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. And you can see here, there's the banner div and there's the bottom margin of 30 pixels. But again, that image is no longer in the um, banner div. It's now inside of a div called slider. So what I need to do is I need to come back into my CSS and I need to create a style, an ID style, for the slider. So I'm going to go ahead and do pound sign slider and I'm going to just duplicate this. I could have actually just copied and pasted that in, but I'm going to go ahead and type it on in there. And that's all there is to putting that bottom margin on the slider. So now I'm going to go ahead and come back in here and refresh. And when my slow computer decides to display that image, you'll see that my content areas have now been pushed down because this div has that bottom margin on it. So that's all there is to setting up an image slider inside of um, your web page. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and add the rollover effect on these two images right here. And you can see in our original the way that works. So I'll see you in the next video.